Okay, so because many people have asked, I'm going to do an updated gear video thing. Yeah! Alright, so to start, you know, we've got the Alembic Epic, as always. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the last video, this is a 1996 Alembic Epic bass. Uh, it's got, uh, shit, I believe it's quilted um, walnut top. Fucking beautiful, that is. Uh, active pickups. Shit, man, this guy, this guy an idiot? Uh, sorry, I let some guy borrow my bass show. Um, you know, volume, pan, treble, bass, you know, all those. Set neck construction, drop D tuner, beautiful bass. Alright, so next we have a new addition ish, last summer, a Lakeland Skyline 5502 Deluxe. Uh, I actually won this bass in a giveaway. You got a J JMM setup, uh, Jazz Bass Music Man, Active Electronics, you know, volume, pan, um, this actually switches between the coils on the bridge pickup. So you have the rear coil, full humbucker mode, front coil, um, you know, treble, bass, mid, all that good stuff. It's a bolt on neck, and it's the, it's my five string bass, and I love it. Do I even need to explain this one? It's a Rickenbacker, or Rickenbacker, sorry, 4003 in Fire Glow. Uh, I also got this last summer, but I actually paid for this. Uh, I paid around 1600 for it. Um, and yeah, tone's fantastic. It's the iconic bass. Neck through. I love this fire glow finish. I'm actually thinking about getting a black pick guard and a black truss rod cover for it. But uh, that'll be in the future. Another new addition, my uh, Sterling Stingray. Uh, I got this for 400 bucks at Guitar Center, and you know, it's just one of those bases I... Picked it up, played it, and absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, also, Act Electronics, um, you know, treble, ba mid, bass, one, you know, the big iconic Music Man pickup. And uh, yeah, this is my D standard bass. There's my beloved Fender Jaguar bass. Got this bass in like 2006, I believe. My dad got it for me as a gift. It was originally red. With, you know, the full-on active electronics and all that, but I actually, uh, like, last year, or two years ago, I redid it completely, and I freaking love this bass. Got a lot of memories of me in this bass, too. Uh, I Heart Rusty. He's the booking guy at the Webster Underground. This one's actually tuned to C, I think. But yeah, this bass and I have a lot of history. Of course, we have the Wild and Weird Squire Katana Bass. These are actually pretty rare. Um, this is a 1985 model. Um, yeah, it's an old Japanese-made Squire. I added these inlay stickers, Mountain Dew sticker, of course, and um, these knobs actually came off my guitar player's Dean. But yeah, I actually think I'm going to play this bass for my next gig and you know see what people think or think it's an alien creature or something like that. Because, I mean, dude, seriously, look how fucking weird it looks. But I love it. And then there's the Fender P bass with the green strings. Um, it's nothing really fancy. It's just, uh, just a 2003 Mexican-made Fender Precision bass uh, that I added quarter-pounder pickups to and CTS pots with a switchcraft jack and cloth wire. Basically like the stuff you got in the American uh, reissues. Um... This is also the sticker bass. Got, you know, this one actually is tuned to C. I'm sorry, the other one was tuned to D. And got the, you know, little stars. And uh, the band Gator King. They're actually pretty awesome. They're a punk band. You should check them out. Yeah, that's my P. We have this bass. It's kind of a work in progress. Uh, this was my first bass. Got completely refinished. Um, Seymour Duncan's. And I forget what kind of bridge it is. But uh, then recently I defretted it and, you know, filled in the slots with wood putty and, you know, sanded it all smooth. But uh, it needs a neck adjustment and it needs electronics work before I can actually play it. 
But yeah, this base is actually pretty old. And uh, last but not least, we have my first five string ever. Got it for 150 bucks at a pawn shop and uh, found out it had a broken truss rod after the fact. It's a 1990 Washburn XS5. It's decent. Um, if it had a if it had a good neck on it, I'm sure it'd be perfectly fine. But as it is, I'm selling it or attempting to sell it. But no one's buying it, which kind of sucks. But yeah, this is actually the last of the bases, if I'm not mistaken. To start off guitars, we have my 1960s Crappanese. Um, it's a kind of no-name Japanese-made guitar from the 60s. Uh, it's pretty cool, actually. I got it for 80 bucks at a pawn shop, and I figured, why not? The only clue I have is it says the Swinger 2 on the headstock. But, uh, yeah, it's got two big single coils, on-off switches for each pickup, volume, volume, and the master tone. has a tremolo, but I kind of broke the bar off it. Oops. I really like the finish, if if nothing else, on this guitar. We have my beloved Gibson, my beloved Gibson SG that I got uh, two years ago. And I beat the thing to hell, as you can see. Uh, modifications are, it's got a P94 here. This is the original 496R in the middle. And uh, that's a 500, uh, Bill Lawrence 500 XL installed actually backwards, uh, as Dime Dug did. Also, you know, these uh, fake fret inlay stickers had a kill switch in it, but it broke, so I just kind of left it broken. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this guitar, even though I beat the hell out of it. But I just love it more. Uh, here's my old 90s Aria that I really love. Um, I put the Seymour Duncan Dimebucker in the bridge. But yeah, I, I absolutely love this guitar. Uh, my friend Gian got it for me for 100 bucks at Guitar Center one day, and honestly, it's actually really good for what it is. It's an old, you know, Japanese-made bolt-on neck, but hey, it works really well and it sounds pretty great, so I love it. And last but not least for the guitars, we have a guitar that's actually really special to me. Um, it's actually my mom's old acoustic guitar, and for those of you who actually know me in real life, you probably know that my mom's dead, and uh, my mom died when I was four, so yeah, this is her old... 80s um, Fender Classical, and uh, it's my only acoustic, and I take really good care of it. Actually, I take better care of it than I do of some of my other gear. So, but yeah, anytime I want to, you know, play acoustic, I usually bust this thing out and just play on it. So, um, that's all for guitars and basses. I don't think I'm going to do effects pedals because I that hasn't changed at all since the last one. I don't think, and. There's only one more guitar, and that's my Squire Strat, but that's actually at my friend's house. So, yeah, unless you want me to run to Coventry right now, I don't think I can show it to you. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching this and uh, listening to Municipal Waste with me. And I uh, hope you had fun ogling my gear.